Last one. All right. Um, so some of the, these elements you guys, you all, those of you who have attended prior workshops have, have seen before, but I also wanted to provide kind of an update on where we are and, and also where we're hoping to go. Um, so we've now with these different workshops that we've done, we've had almost 900, uh, almost a thousand workshop registrants. Uh, you can see the geographic distribution of people who've registered for Fathomet workshops. I mean, really, you know, the hope is that Fathomet will become a global image and ML model repository. And so it's really heartening to see, um, you know, this distribution of people who are interested in, in Fathomnet and what we're trying to create here. Uh, we had our first uh, publication that describes the database, you know, a, a paper describing a database, which doesn't seem to be the most interesting content, if you ask me. Uh, but we've had more than 10,000 publication downloads since then. Um, it's actually in the 99th percentile of altmetrics. If you follow altmetrics, it just means that it's being downloaded a lot. It's being interacted with a lot. We're also being um, cited a lot too. Uh, and I don't know if these, I haven't. So these are numbers I pulled from our GitHub repo. I have not looked to see the usage of the models on Hugging Face yet. But we've had more than 900 model downloads uh, on the Fathomet model zoo. Uh, so again, people are using the models that we're, we're generating as part of this activity. Um, right now for Fathomnet, we have more than almost 600 database contributors. Of course, we would like to have more um, because there is clearly a bias of, of the most of the, the, the majority of the data are coming from Mbari and we want and you know focused in the Monterey Bay region. If we want to create a global image in ML model repository, we need representative data from other parts of the ocean. I think these numbers are right. Um, almost 300,000 localizations and over 100,000 images. Uh, you know, great start. We need to do more. Uh, and then over 6,000 independent website users, 93 countries. Um, and really what we're envisioning, you know, short term, we're really focused on this global image and ML model repository. But as you've seen, I think from my intro, uh, thinking about uh, Ocean Vision AI and, and building out other tools or other solutions that, you know, create an, an integrated workflow for people who are trying to use AI and people to, to process the visual data. I think where we're really working towards is a you know, global network for ocean life discovery. Um, and this is, you know, I think for me personally, very inspiring. I think this is something that our group thinks a lot about is like, if we wanted to discover all life in the ocean, what are the types of um, uh, resources and workloads that we need to enable that, that sort of uh, effort? Uh, and what we've done is, you know, we're really inspired by some of the work that we've seen in the uh, community science space. Um, I'm going to highlight iNaturalist, uh, and I, I don't think these numbers are actually accurate anymore. I think the number of people who've signed up to use iNaturalist is more than that. Um, so this is an effort. Uh, it was originally associated with the California Academy of Sciences. Uh, now iNaturalist has rolled out and created their own nonprofit. But what they've shown is how you can engage people really broadly. Um, it allows people to record their observations, you know, take uh, individual photos, share them with the community, and then, you know, provide a, a community resource where people can discuss their findings. Um, and so this is something we really want to, to borrow from uh, because, you know, we want to also focus on creating this ocean life data repository. And then there's eBird, uh, which is uh, spun out of the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, they're also the ones that are responsible for the Merlin Bird ID app for your phone. So if you ever wanted to go in your backyard and know what birds are, are um, you know, having calls or whatever, you can do that using the Merlin Bird ID app. Um, and this is actually, I think, more akin to something that we're trying to create here because they um, very carefully... Um, you know, review data, augment data, make sure that the, the data are accurate with, you know, a, a number of different um, experts that uh, they work with uh, around the world, um, but also provide mechanisms for individuals who might not be experts to participate meaningfully in, in this process. Um, and so this is something that we're thinking a lot about, right? How do we develop robust networks of contributors, not just the taxonomists or computer scientists, but also broadly 
um, you know, to include enthusiasts in meaningful ways. And, and so that means, again, regionally trying to um, include others. And so I, what I want to do is I want to provide you with a timeline on um, at least the ocean vision AI effort. So this is what's been funded by the National Science Foundation's Convergence Accelerator. And uh, we launched FathomNet uh, version 1.0 as part of that activity last year. Uh, we also launched the MVP or the beta version of, of Fathomverse, the game, last summer. Um, and then we are we did also a beta launch of the portal in, in November, and we're having subsequent beta launches uh, throughout this year um, for its a, a eventual final release. Um, we're launching the first version of Fathomverse uh, at the end of April, um, we're targeting May 1st as the official launch date. Um, and then we'll be launching the first version of the portal this sometime this summer. Um, and then we're going to be following up with a second, potentially second uh, version or second release of Fathomverse. What we recognize is we're going to learn a lot from the launch of the game for the first go round. And those lessons learned will be um, contributed to uh, the, the next version of the game. Um, we are constantly involved in engagement activities. Um, you know, this workshop is, is actually one of them, um, but also that that Fathom at Kaggle competition. So the goal here is that this will continue to be in an annual event in partnership with the, the fine-grained uh, visual categorization workshop at, at CVPR. Um, and then what we're also doing, and I'm spending a lot of time thinking about is how do we implement a sustaining funding model for Ocean Vision AI? Because I think it's pretty clear that the, the tools are really powerful uh, and they can have a lot of different use cases, but a lot of these tools are at the, the very start or the very beginning and they need to be iterated upon, improved upon, and that requires people um, and development time and effort. And so how do we maintain our progress um, as this ocean life discovery network uh, continues to grow. Um, so these are not easy, <laughs> easy problems to solve, but I'm hoping we will have uh, at least a really good starting point in the future. Fortunately, we've been really, I would say, successful in, in acquiring some funding um, that supports our activities. So I mentioned the NSF Convergence Accelerator. Um, that has resulted in growing and in and, and, and launching FathomNet, Fathomverse, and eventually the portal, um, but also National Science Foundation's uh, BioDirectorate uh, and the Integrative Organismal Science Group. Um, they are supporting a, a beta version of uh, what we're calling Fathomverse Aquarium Explorer. So this is an activity that um, members of the FathomNet team have been involved in, particularly Giovanna, um, working with the Monterey Bay Aquarium uh, and Monterey Bay Aquarium volunteers to label data from imagery collected at the aquarium of animals there. And Lonnie has been training models from that effort. Uh, and then the idea is that these models can be running natively on your phone within an app uh, so that you can in real time ID animals at the aquarium. Um, and so the idea is part of this first um, effort or beta version of this app would uh, allow, you know, a, an aquarium visitor to interact with um, some of the AI proposals, see what the um, AI is suggesting is, is being shown to them in the tanks, provide a link to more information about the animals, but I think also very importantly, provide a link to Fathomverse, the actual game. So you could have this aquarium experience on your phone, but then you can also continue contributing to the ocean life discovery pipeline as a player of, of Fathomverse. Um, so we, we're focused primarily on Monterey Bay Aquarium now because that's in our backyard, but we've also collected data um, at the Vancouver Aquarium uh, because that was where CBPR was hosted last year. Um, and then CBPR is gonna be hosted at uh, uh, in Seattle this year. And so potentially we could be collecting data from Seattle Aquarium. But as part of this kind of initial phase, we're trying to understand, you know, is this something that's engaging? Is this something that can convert enthusiasts at an aquarium to contribute to Fathomverse? Um, and so is this really scalable? And so these are questions we're gonna try and answer thanks to the NSF bio uh, funding. Um, 
Another activity that we've mentioned, and if you were in the marine scientist workshop, and we talked a little bit more about is this FathomNet expert taxonomist series. And so the idea of this, I mean, it's being led by Brian Kennedy at ODL and uh, Karen Osborne at the Smithsonian, um, but it provides an opportunity for taxonomists to, in their own words, explain to people why, you know, doing what they're doing is, is helpful and interesting and, and help them, help viewers distinguish between different animal groups using visual data. Um, so we're really excited to kick this off because we really want to connect experts with the enthusiasts. Um, and I don't know if you follow, you use social media or anything, but um, I know the enthusiasts get a kick out of when an expert jumps in and, and confirms their ID online. And so we'll be able to make those really meaningful human connections through that taxonomous series. Uh, the other thing that we just fortunately got funded, um, and this was uh, supported by the Dalio Philanthropies, is building foundation pipelines that use foundation models that will enable uh, data massive data in ingestion into FathomNet. Um, so the idea here is um, uh, so there's a we're hiring a full time um, ML ops researcher who will work with OEAI to uh, evaluate a number of different foundation models and pipelines that will enable um, pulling data from already existing public repositories like iNaturalist and GBIF. Um, and enrich those data with localizations and then push them into FathomNet. Um, and so this is also hopefully part of a collaboration that we're trying to finalize with uh, WORMS, the World Registry of Marine Species, and their editors. Uh, the hope here is, you know, they have interest in, in getting visual data into their database, and so do we at FathomNet, and so we might be able to collaborate together on that. Uh, but thanks to Dalio Philanthropies for helping um, push that forward. Um, and so, yes, the other thing I also wanted to mention, right, it's, I think these this Ocean Life Discovery Network, this idea is a really big one, um, and it's going to take a lot to get us to our end goal. And so one of the things I'm going to be doing is putting together a proposal to Ted Audacious for this idea. And so if this is something you all are interested in, either joining as an official collaborator or a contributing institution, I'm happy to um, have those conversations uh, separately. Uh, so email me, I'm very easy to find on the internet, sadly. Uh, and then lastly, just a plug, you know, if you do wanna meet some of us in person, uh, we're going to be at the Marine Imaging Workshop in Monterey in October of this year. So um, we're very excited to be able to meet with our collaborators and other and our peers within the community. And um, it would be great for you all to come to Monterey. It's actually the best time of year to visit. So uh, we, we, we picked those dates specifically. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have as we move forward. Any plans for collaborations with Okeanos Explorer or Nautilus? Um, so they are actually groups that we are already speaking with. Um, for instance, we have members of their team that are on our engagement uh, groups. Um, so there's things that we're we're working towards. Um, we will know. So part of the challenge is because not all of the, the features or platforms that have been uh, de have been completely developed and released yet. And so once we're able to do that, we're going to be able to demonstrate to more and more members of the community what, what Ocean Vision AI can, can uh, contribute. Um, so Dropbox, Dropbox ads featuring your story everywhere too. How's that partnership? Uh, Dropbox just did an interview. <laughs> And they see the they seem to have a lot of people that look at their Dropbox blog. So I was kind of pleasantly surprised. Um, so I don't who knows? I don't know where that's going to go. Um, Grace, did you have anything you wanted to add? That was me asking that question from Laura's account. Yeah, I was so curious. I really see it everywhere, and it's such a fun story and beautiful image. I was hoping that you got like paid maybe more for that. <laughs> I got paid zero. Oh man, um, but it, I guess it brings attention to the story. <laughs> it, it does. Yeah, I was Next like, maybe they're going to post the I'll images. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good, actual, that's an interesting point. Uh, I could reach out to them. I mean, I, you know, it's one of those things they do have a, a, a surprisingly large following on the Dropbox blog and they did say that it would get a lot of traction, but that's a good point. I could reach out to them and see if that is something they could do for us as well. Um, great. And then Matt, there's, are there plans or interest in quitting images in marine life uh, for Earlier Jones and the database? Uh, the answer is yes to both. Um, so, you know, we have drone imagery here at Ambari. I know other groups that have drone imagery. As far as we're concerned, if it's a, an image representation of marine life, Fathomet is appropriate for that data. Um, because again, if, if we're trying to create a resource uh, for ocean life, all the different representations uh, at which we can be observing them uh, is part of that. Um, all right, well, I th think we've run out of time officially, um, but thank you everybody for attending. And if you have any questions, we will obviously um, be able to follow up with them later. Thanks, Kikani. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, everybody.